Now, I'd seen you on Twitter, and um, you'd responded to a couple of my posts, and then I guess I had tweeted about coming back to work and getting back into streams or something, setting up some guests. I forget what I said exactly. And then you said, when are you going to have New Age Messiah on the show? And I said, well, when let's do it Friday. <laughs> and um, here you are. So I, I don't – and you sent me a bunch of stuff, and I'll pull up some of that stuff too, but um, – I thought it'd be better to do it like this, honestly, where I learn along with the audience. I know a little bit, but it's just, it makes it a little harder for me because I don't know where to start because it's, it's a freaking, it's a gigantic freaking thing. And if you had like, but it doesn't matter. I can start anywhere. Well, first off, let me start, um, get, introduce yourself and tell us who you are. For the purposes of this, uh, interview, I declared a mission when I was about 40 to find something new to replace religion, basically, because I had kind of felt like I got screwed over by it. And I threw my soul at the world and eventually got tortured and looked my heart in the mirror. And there was like a massive enlightenment type experience in that, in that one second. And then there were all kinds of miracles. A goddess eventually spoke to me <clears throat> and that's the basic basic there's a you know a, a long story both in front of and behind there's two things going on right now what am i on the show yes okay what's going on on your end oh okay yeah, you're on the show. We're live still. Sure. You were in the okay. chat. You saw me. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, I know. I just there was other there were other audio things going on. And I thought maybe you were doing something for the show and then talking to me private. I didn't know. No. Um no, yes. there's no there's no other audio. It could have been a glitch or something with, with me, but no, I didn't press anything. Oh, I got two. Let me turn off my speakers. Me... Yeah, I think that's on your end. Okay. I'm not playing anything. Off. Yeah. I'm gonna turn off my speakers. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're right. We need his history with Gabe. I agree with that. What's up, Tommy? All right, is that better? You can't hear me now, can you? Everything that's you said like two minutes ago is coming through now. Okay, just let me refresh. Okay, is that better? No. There's still there's still a lag like two minutes. I'm hearing what you said two minutes ago. Well, drop out and join back in. Okay. But how do you hear that? I don't even know how to I don't even know how to exit and see. Okay, Google Meet's not. All right, we'll we'll work on it. It's look, we've had tech issues plenty of times. So, um, yeah, I'll. Can you not I'll hear? Screw around, yeah. Take me off, and I'll screw around and see what we come up with. Okay, yeah, I'll pull you off the the screen. Okay. Uh, just close the whole fucking door. Uh, well, thankfully, I have the I have the link here. Okay. X, 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 X. Hit that big red button. There you go. How did he hear that though? Thank you. Tommy Magnum two hundred and ninety two cent five dollars. Salute, sir. I appreciate you. We'll do another breathalyzer. I'm going to start doing multiples of these. Why? Just for the fuck of it. I'm getting clean breathalyzer shots, too. Oh! 
Boom. There we go. There we go. Mute the stream if he has it open. Yeah, that's definitely what it is, isn't it? Oh, that you mentioned it. God. <sighs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, you can't run the stream and then... Because he has to be hearing mm -hmm. something. Yeah, okay. All right, are you there? Yes. Okay, so turn off the stream if you have that on. That's, what I, that's what I did. Yeah, I figured yeah. it out. That's okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, I had just been alerted by a supporter of mine as well. And he's like, he's probably got the stream on. And I said, oh, yeah, you're right. That makes sense. Because you're definitely hearing some of what I said because you were doing what I was, <laughs> I was asking you. Just, yeah, was yeah, you were hearing the other two part. things. Yeah, 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 I see. Echo, echo. Two-minute echo. I see. All right, now, um, do you – so you call yourself New Age Messiah. Do you think you're the Messiah, or, or is this a whole new thing? It's okay. So whatever you think about a Messiah that's been kind of programmed into you from the Jewish stuff is fake. But the idea of the Messiah is real because what happened to me is, you know, I declared a mission. I got into this uh, torturous relationship where I was almost dead. I got tortured by a guy in a, you know, very lucrative situation, real estate. We were best friends for two years, whatever. He tortured me. And I was basically crippled on my back near death. And I started reading about spiritual stuff, the heart and everything. And about your image not being the real you, that if you have no self-image, you can be innocent. Or if you have a self-image, you can't be innocent, right? It was Deepak Chopra, The Way of the Wizard was the book. And I was trying to find my way out of hell, my way out of hell. And I'm serious, like, I don't think anybody's ever been in worse condition than I was in at the time. I was freaking fried, man. It was horrible torture, uh, even though someone who learned what happened to me might not think so, right? But it was it was terrible. So uh, as I was reading this book, I go to the mirror, and I look wretched. I used to be like kind of almost Hollywood. People would say I like, look like this movie star or that movie star, right? So I look in the mirror, and I look like this wretched sick son of a bitch you know and i'm like that isn't me and i looked down at my heart and closed my eyes right i looked because i was reading this book right it's like okay what the hell is my heart i have no idea so i closed my eyes trying to find my heart i kind of went down into my awareness or whatever and i felt like this sweet second grade teacher's pet inner child me that i remembered that was such a distant memory because i've been in hell for like pretty close at least a year it just seemed like forever but anyway so i'm like i felt this sweet boy and instead of like that's me in the mirror i said this is me in my heart right i said this is me instead of that to me it's like change your identity from what's in the mirror to what's in your heart and i had this freaking rush of light massive freaking and the words this is going to change the world were in my mind without me thinking of it. it was just oh, like this is going to change the world with a freaking sledgehammer from god type thing you know this is going to change the world there's absolutely no fucking doubt about it and from that second on nothing else has mattered to me except what i had to do to survive you know and uh i started making mirror jewelry look your heart in the mirror was like that word you know mirror jewelry and i thought in that same like five second instant i thought this is going to be a thing, but how the hell am I going to make it a thing? Because I'm a freaking tortured beggar, you know, basically barely surviving. And uh, then like a week, two weeks, a significant amount of time later, I remembered that I had declared a mission to find something new, right? And, it, and until that time, I had just been like, okay, I had this revelation and shit, but I have no idea what it means, right? And then I remember, oh, yeah, I had this fucking mission to find something new right i'm like holy shit it makes sense now and then like boom 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 shit started happening to, to have it fall in place where not only was it meant to happen but the synchronicity involved in it is earth shattering uh millennial never existed type extreme synchronicity that involves the government uh hollywood i mean okay i'll tell you the first quickie story and just you know, bear in mind that I'm still a little bit tortured. I still have a struggle. I still struggle with the shit that went on. And it's not like a psychological thing. It's a physiological thing with 
with the inside of my body being fucked up, right? <clears throat> but I made this, I, I, this isn't the one, but I made a mirror jewelry, right? It's got a miraculous, it's a mirror. It shines a light, right? So it's like shine a light, mirror jewelry, look your heart in the mirror, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not, it's miraculous. All those things you think, oh, that's trivial or that's petty. But when you're crippled beggar and you're freaking laying there near death and all this shit starts to make sense, mirror jewelry, miracles. The first guy to put one on emailed me and said he had an experience he can't describe, surge of power, right? And this is where I'm laying on my back fucking 24 hours a day, barely alive. <laughs> and all this shit is uh, happening. Anonymous what's sent that, $3 that, that, NGL. Right. This guy sounds and looks like he graduated out the mental That's institution. Cool. All right, not kind, super chat, but I appreciate the three bug. Um, continue with your tale there. Yeah, okay. So the big, the first big thing that happened that was just, there was uh, synchronicity and dates and stuff in a court case where I sued the guy that tortured me. You know, like they deposed me on Valentine's Day. I filed a suit on December 7th, which was my older brother, Black Sheep, who did shitty stuff to me, his birthday, and also it's Pearl Harbor Day, right? So I didn't even know it was December 7th when I thought it was completely not even on my mind until later, right? Then they deposed me on Valentine's Day. Then on June 5th, 2006, we're sitting in court. And the lawyer against me says, uh, the guy who tortured me will be in court tomorrow to answer Mr. John, Mr. Johnson, to answer Mr. Johnson's interrogatories. So that's June 5th, 2006. The guy will be in his office tomorrow to answer, which was 666, right? So at the very moment that he said that in court, his lawyer said that, it was like, I'm the good guy. Remember, this was like three years on of torture as hell. And all of a sudden, I, I'm the good guy. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm the good guy, right? He's the bad guy. And then, but, okay, I made the first pendant. Uh, a guy from New York ordered it. He said, I want it. The, the jeweler made it upside down because she thought it looked Masonic and she didn't want to deal with anything Masonic, right? So uh, the the guy said, I At like Olaf that pendant, $1. but would you zero, turn it the zero way on so Rumble. the tip? The, the, May the ghost of George Norrie Power Ralph for an epic segment. Top. The jeweler if made you it know, on the you bottom. Know. And he saw, somehow in New York saw it on the internet in my tiny little website. And you want to flip it around. So I sent it in to the uh, casting place and they uh, flipped it. And then it was a big thing because it shrunk again and the mirrors I had didn't fit. So I had to custom order mirrors. So, you know, it was like months. And then finally there's this thing, right? I go and pick it up. I'm like, holy shit. So I email him. This is the most beautiful jewelry ever created, right? And I uh, put it in a little box to him and I go back to my life for three days and four or five days, whatever it was, and pretty much almost forget about it. That he's getting this and it's like because there's nothing else on my mind but the torture i'm going through right and then he i open an email it says i got the pen and they really are beautiful when i put it on i had this experience i can't describe the surge of power blah blah blah, right so my holy shit, that's when i started calling them miracles but uh when i first got the upside down pendant i made a perspective so i was in europe in the army and i traveled around taking pictures uh i did a year rail pass and i was in all the countries took all these you know nice pretty pictures and uh i made greeting card spec whatever you want to call them like provisional greeting cards for starbucks look your heart in the mirror greeting cards uh and the pennant pictures of pennant you know and sent it to starbucks to be uh exclude because i was going to starbucks every day to have coffee and that was really my only you know sort of life sort of life was go to starbucks so on the day i spent the, this is got it it's really hard for people to really grasp okay three let's say three years on of living in complete hell after being this close to being a multi-millionaire because i set up these multi uh huge real estate projects where this guy's torturing me right <clears throat> so i'm coming home on my little bicycle i was a bicycle monk basically i open up my mailbox and the Rolling Stone magazine is in there. So I put it in the bike basket. And I kind of go, okay, I'm going to go celebrate sending my prospectus to Starbucks. You know, this is a big deal, big day. Kind of big day of my life, sort of. And uh, I get on my bike, kind of ambling around. And I said, okay, I'll go to Pizza Hut. So I go to Pizza Hut. I order salad bar because I was like my, that used to be my favorite thing to eat was salad. Pizza Hut is salad bar. Salad, salad bar, Pizza Hut. So, uh, I opened up the Rolling Stone magazine to an article called Kid Cannabis, where they uh, busted some kids that were 
coming from Canada into Northern, I live in Northern Idaho, right? And they'd smuggle pot from Canada into Idaho in backpacks, they'd cross the border. They'd like get out of the truck and cross over on foot and they became millionaires and they had like the whole, the whole life. I mean, they had parties and money and everybody was buying pot from them. But then somebody got killed and the FBI got involved and they got busted, right? So the, the uh, uh, article, yeah, I, there's, a, there's yeah, a movie yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. They on. made a movie about it. Okay. So going. anyway, I'm open. I'm sitting in freaking Pizza in Coeur d'Alene. I open up the story, Kid Cannabis. The kid used to be, or he was a high school dropout who worked in Pizza Hut at Coeur in, in He worked at Pizza Hut in Coeur d'Alene. I'm sitting in Coeur d'Alene in Pizza Hut. Within that, that Rolling Stone magazine had been in my my mailbox for maybe 10 minutes or, you know, an hour at the most. Because the postman, you know, they kind of come at the same time. And it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, no. So, I, and my freaking, I'm like, holy shit. I show the people in the restaurant, look at this, look at this. And the waitress is embarrassed because uh, they didn't want anybody to know that they had a, a dope dealer working there, you know. So it was really, and I, and I walked out of there on clouds. It's like, holy shit, this just happened. And nobody else in the world has any fucking clue about it. And they will have no, no one else in the world will have any comprehension about what just happened. It just blows your mind that, that something that impossible can happen and no one have a clue about it. It's just because everyone was going on with their life all the same. For me, it was like, and then um, at the time I was broke, I was living in this uh, house. Yeah, no, I'll just stop you here because, um, and sure. I'll, I'll let you continue in a second, but be mindful that you got to cut some parts out uh, when you're telling this story, just so yeah. people can follow it. And when you get off into like in detail descriptions of the article and stuff like that, um, you're losing people cause they can't keep, they can't follow it. Sure. So hit sure. the main points and kind of take us down that way with what you were saying. Well, my, uh, the next thing I opened to him, uh, the magazine was a picture of Paul McCartney on a bike, right? It looked just like mine. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool too, because Paul McCartney at the Super Bowl, I had like this feeling that this guy is exactly the music he was playing versus everything else they play at the Super Bowl. I was like, this is what this is the kind of thing that America needs. Uh, and I had like a connection with Paul McCartney on the Super Bowl, blah blah blah. But anyway, so there's Paul McCartney on a bike. And so I called my landlord who lived in Rescue, California. He had been paying my rent for me without telling his wife. You know, he's like digging through all of his hidden money sending it to me invested in a little company you know keeping me alive lives in rescue california i told him about the pizza thing and i told him about the paul mccartney thing and so when i told him about the paul mccartney thing he says i got tickets to see paul mccartney in three nights so like here's the guy you know this is it's just the odds they're just beyond impossible and it keeps going right so somewhere not too long after that i was deciding to go i used to when I was on my mission, I was online like a hardcore uh, anti-Christian uh, starting a new as Gloopy was my pen name, Gloopy Boy. And uh, Gloopy meant stupid in Russian, but I thought it meant clever. I was a Russian linguist in the army. So anyway, I was pretty damn successful as Gloopy Boy, right? I had like all kinds of, I was totally dominating the website as Newsmax back when forums. Yeah, I know Newsmax. Yeah, so they had a forum, and back before uh, they got rid of it, you know, that was kind of the biggest forum for online discussion. And I totally dominated the culture society section, and I had all kinds of followers, and people were calling me the devil and all this shit because I was railing against Christianity. I totally blasted all the Christians, right? And they, and their whole religion and everything about it, right? So that'll uh, do it. That'll get them to call you the devil, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, uh, what was that? Where was I going with that? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, I wanted I to gonna... go back online. So I was almost dead for five years. I, I completely vanished from the earth for five, six, seven years. I was just gone. Now, wait, 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 wait. That's what happened after this? Uh, During the time after I got tortured, there were five or five, no, wait, six, wait, wait, seven wait, years. After you got tortured, there were five or six or seven years that you were just completely gone from earth? I just, yeah, I lived like a monk. I laid on my back most of the day. I did nothing. I didn't go on the internet except just I did not have any internet presence after being this sort of, I called myself a minor league star. I had a motto, reality is God. When you pretend or lie, you cease to exist, you die. And my whole thing was be real, right? If you're real, like an animal, you're gonna be naturally good. You're gonna be what you're meant to be. And the only way humans fuck it up is trying to be something they're not. 
putting on a facade, all this stuff. You got to be real, right? So I was real. Every time I felt anything, I acted on type thing. <clears throat> so uh, after five years of being dormant, I, so from being a, an internet minor league star to being completely dormant, it's like, okay, time to come back on the internet. But what do I name myself? And part of the torture involved, uh, the guy told me, bend over, I'll drive, right? And <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He said, that was the torture that killed me. He said, bend over, I'll drive after he's telling me to suck his dick and licking his lips and freaking. No, wait, wait, wait. No, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That does sound like torture, but what? He made you suck his dick and then did no, what? No. No, no, he he said he told me first. I had a girlfriend who lived on the same lake as him, and she was like, me and her were like the perfect couple as far as I was concerned. She had three kids, I had three kids. There was three boys, three girls. We looked exactly like the Brady Bunch. She looked like Carol Brady, same type of woman. And uh, he was cooler than me, smarter than me, a little bit taller than me, and he had a big dick. He kept telling me how. <laughs> nine inches with diameter he was just getting to be like a demon like i got nine inches with diameter i'm gonna fuck her and shit like that and she's falling in love with him right because he's joe cool and he's making lots of money and he's the one that was doing the real your estate girlfriend life. was yeah he made her fall in love he did this to other guys i eventually found out every guy that got anywhere near him that had a girlfriend or even a wife he would get in their head and uh torture him because he could get any girl to fall in love with him it was really really he's a freaking amazing guy as far as that <laughs> But anyway, um, why didn't you just hit him with a bottle or something? Fuck this guy. Like, what? <laughs> well, we were I'm best friends for, we were best friends for two years and we were doing real estate deals. I'm talking 250 houses on a man-made lake that would have made me at least $10 million as a real estate agent. And I had no idea you could hurt somebody psychologically, psychically. I had no idea. I thought anybody who's all whiny because somebody freaking said shit to him is just a pussy, right? Or just some girl that, you know, but he literally murdered me. If I wasn't, if I didn't have this revelation, if I wasn't on a mission in the first place, if eventually right. the goddess didn't speak to me and all these miracles, I would be dead like a thousand times over. And right. so, so I was murdered. And uh, anyway, so the reason why I called myself new age Messiah is because when I was deciding to go back online, I needed a name. And there was, because of the bend over all drive shit, there was like a psychic spear in my belly. And there was a crown of thorns around my head inside, like there was a black hole. I drew it on, there's a, there's a drawing that I did like not that long after uh, of this. There was all kinds of like little, it was freaking bizarre, but it felt like a crown of thorns inside my head, literally. I'm not making that up at all, not even close. And there was like a spear in my belly, right? And I had this mission and I got tortured and I had a revelation. So I'm like, New Age Messiah is my name, right? And then like, it was just really just to have an uh, uh, no, internet okay. name okay. that okay. had some relation to uh, what was going on. All right, now and look. Then, wait, wait. Yeah. We have to <laughs> slow down here. Uh, <laughs> what is the bend over all drive thing? <laughs> He told me a new asshole. He put my head up my ass. <laughs> I imagined it happening because I was I was a be real. I was like this be real and everything, no matter what came across my path, I was real about it, right? So he said, oh, no, girl. I was driving the golf cart. Uh, we were golfing and he was in the passenger seat. He, I went out to pee, came back in, he says, whip it out. After he'd been torturing me, suck my dick, I'm gonna fuck your girlfriend, all this shit, right? Licking his lips, slurping. So he's like, whip it out. I'm gonna golf cart. But with him all alone in the fucking middle of nowhere. And I'm like, fucking hell, what the fuck do I do about this shit? Right. And then, like, he says, bend over, I'll drive. Because he used to drive, he had an ice SUV with super stereo, big wheels, all that shit. Right. So he usually drove. And now I'm driving. He's like, bend over, I'll drive. And I freaking imagine that happened in my head. The real, what really, what he really meant by it was to ass rape me with his huge nine inch diameter with diameter dick he said that shit i got diameter nine inches with diameter i'm gonna fuck her <laughs> and you know at first i'm like i didn't i'm like you're not gonna fuck her dude you're a piece of shit she's not gonna fuck you she's a nice woman but she eventually of course fall, falls in love with him and can't get enough of him and just i'm just tortured about it. even before he tortured me i'm tortured about it right 
But uh, nine inches anyway, in diameter. The shot's he's hard nine inches. Really. Nine inches with diameter. He's, he's in other words, a big fat nine inch dick is what he said he had, and you can I sometimes see it. No, yeah, I sorry. Don't see it. It's just it's it. part of the fucking story. It sucks. I don't it sucks see it. bad, but I went through it right. So so the, there was this somehow uh, psychically like you know when you get a cramp and it's like what the fuck is that? That shit's fucking holding me there and I can't do a damn thing about it. When you get that kind of you have no explanation for how that could happen. The same kind of like shit happened where there was a fucking dick that went in my ass and it created this thing. And there was all these uh, freaking weird things going on in my brain, right? And it felt like crown of thorns in there. So I'm like, okay, I got a crown of thorns in my head and I got a spear in my belly and I made this mission and I had a revelation. I'm the New Age Messiah, right? And then I finally, I was like New Age Messiah and I was warming up to it, you know, right? And I was on the lost website. <laughs> no, wait, wait. Just, Were you... Did he do the deed or what? Like I, I'm having. No, no, a... I never. He never touched me. Other than when just a, he had like a, a really fucking flaccid way of like shaking hands and all that shit. And he would he, he once or twice he fucking just barely touched me on the shoulder. That was it. And, we, and it was never. It was always psychic torture. Is what it was. I'm gonna fuck your girlfriend, suck my dick. And he had total control over our real estate stuff because he had the money guy. He had the the brilliance. I mean, I was very good at real estate. I did all kinds of shit before I got with him. I was making good money. I had the best projects in town. And it just so happened that here's this guy that's freaking light years ahead of everybody else in the real estate market here as far as his brains and shit. And uh, he says, I want to build a lake, find me a spot on the prairie. You know, I want to build a lake. I'm like, I had this vision because I had a dream. I used to live in South Dakota and there was a little stupid lake. And I had a dream one night that I'd developed this little lake that we used to water ski on and fish in, right? This is country bunkin lake. And that dream when he said I want to build a lake, it freaking popped in my head. I saw there was a vision. So I had I had this vision of building a lake in the uh little town of Rathrum just north of here, right? So I hooked up with landowners and developers and you know people that could make it happen. And I got I made it happen for them, right? After I made them a million dollars on another deal I showed them. So I show them a, a deal that makes them a million dollars overnight. And I set up the Manly Lake deal and the fucker tortures me. And, you know, not necessarily exactly in that order, I, but uh, right. so back to that, I decided I'm New Agent Side. Then I got on this Lost website and Lost, as soon as I, I had. You're talking about the TV it. show Lost, are you not? Yeah. Yeah. TV show Lost. So, like, I was not, I never turned on my TV. Like I say, I was in the freaking darkest, farthest from society place you could possibly be. But my kids got turned on to it by their mom. And they brought over the DVD for season one, right? And they put it in within, I don't know, almost right away. I'm like, that's a spiritual show. It's about spirituality, right? So I'm like, I got into it. I dug it. And then I, they brought over season two the next weekend. And so I had season one, season two. Then I uh, did the rest on Netflix or whatever it was I could stream it on, right? So I caught up. And in season five, I joined like this forum, uh, Lost dot com and as new age messiah right and i signed up on the forum as new age messiah the freaking started saying i am the new age messiah the goddess uh no the goddess hadn't spoke to me at that point right i had not been spoken to by the goddess there was all these freaking wild miracles i had no idea who was doing them or you know just and in fact if you i read that i uh just looked over my story that i wrote like 15 years ago and I still referred to it as God. When I wrote that story, I referred to it as God. I didn't say anything about God. I just said, God is doing all this shit. I have no idea, right? So anyway, season five of Lost, I'm the new agent side. I started making a big splash again because I did used to be like that. I would just, whatever website I was on, I had just 100 to 1 clicks over everybody else. So same thing happened on the Lost website, right? And then... Uh, they eventually banned me and, and and everything, you know. But once they banned me, I went to uh, another one, uh, the biggest one, Lost PD or something. I don't remember. But anyway, uh, they came over from Lost.com and told Lost PD to ban me. So Lost PD banned me. Then I went to Lost for, Lost TV Forum.com or whatever. Got on there, New Age Messiah, right? And, and but then I had a theory about the show. The meaning of the show was uh, encoded in the airline names and flight numbers. There was yeah. There was two different uh, airlines. One of them was a Jira 316, and one of them was a Oceanic 815. And I said, Oceanic 815 represents the good, 
which was spirituality, and Ajira 316 represents evil, which is religion. And that's what I said the theme of the show was, and I had this theory, anti-Jacob is Richard Alpert, uh, which- I've never Ajira, seen a lot. I've only, well, I saw a few yeah. episodes out of the first season, so like, well, I- it, You know, the main thing is that uh, I had this theory about Lost, right? And that I happened to have, be watching Lost only because my kids brought over the DVD. So it's like this thin, thin thread that I even got on the thing. Then all of a sudden I blow up on these Lost forms. Everybody's reading my threads and nobody else's. It's like, and then I have this theory and they're all saying how stupid I am to have this theory, right? And then it, by season six, toward the end, it starts to com being completely obvious that my theory is true. And then the finale of season six, literally removed all doubt it just completely uh like the, yeah, but the opening montage of season six is oceanic airlines for about 45 seconds of screen time it's just all this heavenly stuff to do with oceanic oceanic uh heavenly 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 right and then it's just they uh they had to blow up the jira 316 plane at the end of the uh in season six i think it was the finale or it was very near the finale that uh the if they didn't blow up the Ajira 316 plane earth would be doomed because the the evil was going to go back to the because the island was separate yeah look i earth. don't care you're gonna have to come up but anyway yeah, yeah i just have to tell you that i solved lost and, and so okay good and then uh that i didn't manage to make a youtube about it for like a year but then even then that youtube got two hundred thousand views and you know it should be already a fact of life that the new age messiah self lost but for some reason nobody wants anybody to know but there's no question that i self lost and i'm the only person I mean, look, that and happens here's, sometimes here's, wait, wait wait stop here's the main wait, thing no though. stop talking let me talk that happens sometimes i mean you just oh, you everything you, isolated you out the happens. show like i mean everything isolated happens sometimes but here's the thing right okay lost had this god and an evil god it was kind of like jacob and anti jacob so jacob was the uh good and then anti Jacob was the bad, and you know anti Jacob is Richard Alpha was. It yeah, look, I don't care about Lost. Okay, let me get one more thing though in there is that Jacob, the good God, had this kind of like temple thing that he lived in, and on the wall of this temple thing was the picture of the freaking goddess. So Lost had the goddess as the ruler of the island, and they had the the uh, secret place of the island where you got your magical powers was like a vagina hole. <laughs> That they and they said loss was the heart of the island, or no, that that uh, the goddess was basically the heart of the island, yeah. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. So, everything about loss was completely synchronistically exactly like my story good versus evil, religion versus spirituality, goddess, Egyptian, all kinds of Egyptian shit. And who's the only person in the world that solved it? Me, it's like you think about that, but that isn't only you take that isolated and you don't give a fuck. That's normal. I've been through that a thousand times. Everybody looks at they take everything else out of the picture but what you have is a 15-year saga they're like okay i'm the new age messiah right i i then i solve lost which I'm is working like, on a 15-year saga myself this is year 10 so, and all this bullshit that i'm doing online but go ahead so so in so i say i'm the new age messiah right everybody like, yeah you're a fucking nut is what you are right you're a fucking nut is what you are then i solve lost it's like see i told you i'm the new age messiah i solve lost who else thought lost in the blah, 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 blah. Nobody give a fuck, right? Nobody give a fuck. Maybe a few people would be like, that's kind of special. Maybe, you know, maybe, you know. And then look your heart in the mirror. People like it. It's whenever my I have a stand, the kids, they swarm, the freaking uh, people love it. When they when they understand what it's about, they love it. Everybody out of contact in, in, in a certain way, they love it, right? And it is. I, I called like right away when I had the first pen and I called like the biggest jewelry distributor in the world and they wanted it. But then they figured they got a whiff of my crazy and they're like yeah we don't want it because <laughs> i was you know crazy in that way but anyway uh so then this is what i didn't want i was really nervous about discussing but uh in december of this is after i declared myself as an asian star right and the 12 21 12 was the big date of the uh mayan calendar right everybody yeah like, oh. i'm here in the yucatan that's the date on the mayan calendar that people said was supposed to be the end of the world but it wasn't really right. it, but but it was a date that was in everybody's mind right so what happened yeah. on 12 21 12 nothing except that the new age messiah made a website that made world news that bring down the cabal and that's the only thing in, on anything significant that happened on 12 21 12. Uh, you know so i was on the Anderson only Cooper. Thing. 
Wait, wait, you're on Anderson Nicotine. Cooper? Yeah. What, he put this? my website up there. He put my website up there and said what a dickhead I was and shit. But over what? The website that I made. No, I mean I understand, but like what what aspect of the website did he say made you a dickhead? Made me a dickhead. Uh well, because it was sandyhookhoax.com. Oh, I see. By the way, I have to state, and I've said this on the record before, um, that I actually don't believe that it was a hoax there. Um, but um, I've heard that before. I've heard people say that before. Personally, yeah. I don't believe that. I want to say that on the air. Um, but you do. Yeah, and uh, I think the goddess does too because she put me on that date to make that website. And that was a, it was a twinkling that I had that morning. It wasn't like, oh, you know, a lot of people say you're a LARPer or whatever shit, you know, you. but no, on 12, on that date, 12, 21, 12, I didn't think, okay, it's 12, 21, 12. I just woke up and I had been on Godlike Productions uh, talking about the Sandy Hook shit. And it's all these different parents were like, there's no fucking way they lost a child. There's no fucking way they lost a child. You would not be on TV smiling about your memory of your child within two days after they, all these people, they're all bullshit and, you know, nobody, there's no fucking way. And I, and I was really, really nervous, but I, they just kept showing clip after clip after clip after clip that made it look freaking ridiculous, right? And so 12, 21, 12, I wake up and I'm like, I got, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a little Sandy Hook. And I just thought SandyHookHoax.com. And I freaking went on whatever it is where you, I think, one and one. And I signed up SandyHookHoax.com. And then within a week, I had enough videos on there to make it kind of like a legit site. And then within two weeks, it was getting a million hits a day. And it was on, wow. or no, it was... It was like once they put it on uh, salon.com, they featured me and they, they put me in there as uh, I said, I'm the new age Messiah. And I made this site on 12, 21, 12, blah, blah, blah. You know, they made fun of me, basically. You know, there's some uh, soul of lost. And, you know, they made me look ridiculous and uh, trying to anyway. But, you know, the fact of the matter is that that was 12, 21, 12. And I said I was a new age Messiah and I just fucking brought down the fucking cabal matrix and that and obviously disagree but you know i would stand by it so there's other you know minor more minor things that have happened that's 12 years ago you know what the hell and i'm still freaking tortured i'm almost out of it i'm gonna be what does that mean like, you're still tortured i have this uh it's a literal black hole you would think oh what's a black hole it's uh, some darkness of the soul or whatever but no my uh i am internally crippled by uh, this psychic tension, like I was talking about with, uh, that formed and, and I've watched the spiraling kind of shit that goes on and it's torturous. Uh, but I read a description of a black hole, like exactly what it is, you know, scientifically with a point of singularity. And, and I remember telling my landlord that, you know, was, uh, from rescue California. I said, there's a point, it's like a mile above my head, but I feel this point. Cause I was like, trying to figure out what the fuck was going inside and i was like constantly like meditating type shit to trying to realize what it was going on i'm like there's a point that's like a mile over my head that all this shit leads to and then i read about black holes i'm like holy shit i'm a black hole because that literally is what i am and there's uh the process of a black hole it, it circulates and all this shit and then it'll be gone and then if i expect that i'll be like this super peaceful person right you know now i'm always kind of on edge and just you know <clears throat> struggling yeah. just to kind of sit in a chair but uh that's that's most of the story right there you know so you're undergoing continuous torture is that what you're telling me yes but i survive i go to work i i just put my head down and do stupid labor type stuff mostly i was doing electronics uh running electronic machines that place uh electronics components on circuit boards and you know you make really fancy shit <laughs> but yeah. and so i can do stuff that requires intelligence but i can't interface with people very well just because i'm like oh, you know i'm just something's fucked up inside i can't describe it it's really bad it's really fucking horrible i go through massive fucking shit all the fucking time but i pretty much disguise it you know i just so but it, it is a process and, it, and it's like it never stops i can feel it happening and it's it's purging and there's all of a sudden there's like uh, like a water bottle when the bubble goes up you know yeah. when, when you pour out some water boop, there's all these like boops because there's like this it's like a plane when it when a pot when the window pops open or whatever and there's all this air pressure that changes like my inside the air pressure was fucking and i had there's a video uh 
if you ever get curious enough to look, there's a video that I made recently after doing that Rolling Stone thing. Rolling Stone had a contest to be a Rolling Stone uh, apprentice or whatever it's called. Like two or three issues after Did the- you win? I made a video to apply to go and uh, I had it ready to send and I went on my bike and I missed FedEx. And then they said the deadline was such and such. And I'm like, oh, if I send it now, I won't meet the deadline, right? And then I like, then they said, we extended the deadline. They probably didn't have shit enough for, for entries, right? So they extended the deadline and I'm like, there's no fucking way they're gonna pick me. I'm a, you know, I look like a fucking loser, you know? So, uh, I mean, the video isn't that bad, but you can tell I'm crippled. You can tell I'm physically fucking crippled because there are pictures of me where I look as rock solid, handsome, all American boy. You know, I was in the army. I was Iron Mike. The, when you run and do push-ups and uh, sit-ups, and there's a contest with the whole base, and I won the fucking Iron Man contest. I was in uh, perfect shape, you know. And then, uh, and and also very girls like me, you know, to dance, and talk. And I could Got talk. It. You were a lady. So sweet talking, sweet talking, nice voice. My voice has even changed. I don't, you know, I don't hardly recognize my own voice. But yeah, uh, yeah that's. I don't know what else to say other than this shit is completely real. I have not made up one thing. It all happened. They're, the miracles are they're just out of this freaking world. And uh, the fact that it's miracle jewelry and, you know, yeah, just it just goes on and on. The freaking significance, the depth, the profundity. And the goddess spoke to me. I don't even know if I said it. I, I, maybe people didn't even know because I was – this is at the point. Okay, so I'm, I'm watching Lost. Uh, I go down to the uh, – Starbucks threw me out. So I go down to the downtown Coeur d'Alene, which is a beautiful place. And they had a, a nice coffee shop. And I would go there every day. And there was this guy with a briefcase that looked like an educated, he looked like a Yale guy. You know, you know what I mean? He looked like an Ivy Leaguer kind of. And he sat by me. And I'm like, that's cool. This guy's sitting by me. And uh, we started talking about loss and the significance of Coeur d'Alene. Coeur means heart, by the way. Coeur d'Alene is where I live. Coeur means heart. Just another coincidence. Uh, so he says the Egyptians, because the Egyptians was a big theme in loss, right? And he's, we were talking about loss. We we're talking about quarterly. I don't know the, anything about loss. Really. I the saw Egyptians, the episodes because the guy said, from fucking Oz was on there that played Augustus in Oz in a wheelchair. The black said, guy. He, That's said, he says the Egyptians were the first major, major civilization to go away from worshiping the gods. And I'm like, when he said goddess, I had like a twinkling. It's like, cause I felt like I was in a womb kind of, you know? And uh, within a day or two of that is when the goddess spoke to me. I was laying on my back. There was these, I was subletting or, you know, had dormers in my house that my landlord rented to me. He allowed me to have people in to kind of help pay the rent. And they were idiots and they were making all kinds of noise and commotion in the kitchen. I'm laying on my fucking bed like, oh, my God, you know, because like I said, I was I was this close to being a millionaire. And all of a sudden I'm freaking broke, a beggar, laying on my back with idiots in my kitchen, fucking taking over my house. Right. And I'm like, I couldn't be more miserable. There's all these miracles going on. I have no idea what the fuck's going on. Nothing's changed, and I'm still broke. I'm still a beggar. And I'm laying there just in this misery, and this freaking sweet woman voice is in my freaking head, not in my head. Just she What did the goddess say? It came from within my soul. She said, I'm very angry, Tef nut cooking. But I didn't recognize nut. I recognized Tef cooking, and I'm like, what the hell was that other syllable, right? And... uh I had been cooking with a scratched up Teflon pan, so I thought she's mad that I'm cooking with a fucked up pan and I'm eating this poison or whatever, you know? And, and, I, and then, like, you know, as you process, like, it took me a day or two to just say, okay, that was a goddess. That was a goddess. And then a week later or whatever, three weeks later, you know, as I started thinking about what's this missing word, what is it, what is it? I'm like, that is her name. The missing word is her name. I'm very angry, blood, death, cooking. I had never heard of Teflon. I had no fucking idea it was whatever, not even close. So I'm like, I go to check out this book from the library about lost, uh, or no, about Egyptian gods and goddesses. And I open the book and I read Tefnut. I'm like, holy fuck, that's who it is. And Tefnut is the original mother of all the other gods and goddesses. And then it just goes on and on. Like I, I end up finding out that uh, her name was changed to Maat, Maat, M-A-A-T, in the coffin text. Atum changes the name of Tefnut to Maat. And Maat is in charge of all the gods and goddesses. Your heart is weighed against the feather of Mott when you die. The Pharaoh does yeah. the will of Mott. The laws of Mott, Egypt, everything about, you know, the name doesn't come up that much. It's always Isis or Horus or whatever. But Mott ruled Egypt. Mott ruled all the gods and goddesses. And the goddess that spoke to me 
was Mott, according to Coffin Case. She said her name was Tefna, but I think they're the same name. So then I find out that the uh, indigenous Egyptian wisdom keeper told this dude, uh, Stephen Mailer, that the Sphinx is Tefna because Tefna had the face of a lion in, in her, you know, the way they pictured her and that the Sphinx is like his face of a lion. He said the Sphinx is Tefna. And uh, Stephen Mailer had some educational shit about it, you know. But I'm reading in, uh, I'm talking about, I'm reading everything I can find about Tefna, right? And the Sphinx. And I read this story about this pharaoh who the Sphinx talked to and said, if you unbury the, if you take the sand away from underneath me or whatever, I'll make you the pharaoh. And there's a real story that the Sphinx told, talked to this guy and said, I'll make you the pharaoh, right? Then, so I'm talking about this in Godlike -like Productions, which I got kicked off of and they completely wiped out everything I ever wrote there because I dominated that place. <laughs> and then, you know, and, and that's where I came up with Lost or uh, Sandy Hook, too. So, anyway, uh, I posted a thing on there about this uh, story. And the same day, within almost like immediately after I posted that story, there came out a story in the news that they uh, dug up the statue of this pharaoh that the Sphinx spoke to. And it, it just like, boom, boom, like shit like that happened over and over and over again like this. You know, Tefnut speaks to a guy, uh, this, or the Sphinx speaks to a guy, makes him pharaoh, then like his statue is dug up thousands of years later on the day I post to Godlike Productions about this guy, or the day after, it's just like, you know, unbelievable shit that goes on. And then, uh, there's a, you know, I guess I've said everything major that I can think of right off the top of my Now, head. why did the goddess pick you? I think, you know, I think about that a lot because I'm certainly not moral. Is it because you saw no. Lost? No. <laughs> she, picked me, she picked me because I declared a mission to find something new and because I understood the basic. My motto was reality is God when you pretend to lie, you cease to exist, you die. In other words, be real, right? Do not fake anything. Go follow your heart, whatever you want to say. Be like a child, innocent. Uh, and that was my mission. And I read in Egyptian lore, whatever, you know, the scholars about Egypt said that the gods and goddesses of Egypt favored not the strong or the ones that fight the battles or, you know, the great athletes or whatever, or the beauty, anything like that. They favor the people that go on spiritual quests. All right. Now, what did so, the goddess say, by the way? I'm very angry. Definite cooking, and that's it. Okay, well, that's all. But that was all I needed. It was because it was, it was all anonymous, and I had no idea where those. And then all of a sudden, I knew. Okay, the freaking goddess is very angry, and she's cooking. In other words, she's setting up this story for something, which she didn't even tell me what it was. I have no idea. I could die tomorrow. I have no fucking idea what's going to happen. I do know that if the dominoes start falling, they're going to fucking. It's a nuclear freaking explosion. You know the Star Wars where the. Uh, Luke goes in, he has like sure. one shot into the freaking middle of the Death Star. Yeah, I've seen. Yes. I think that's I what Look Your Heart in the Mirror is, is one shot into the freaking middle of the freaking cabal and the shit world that we're fucking imprisoned in. It freaking takes it all down. Because number one, the Egyptian God proves the freaking Israel shit false. Number two, uh, it, the Sandy Hook shit, you know, if you don't believe it, that's fine, I, but I think it's fake. And then if you if that is exposed, the whole freaking media matrix crumbles. And the whole freaking, everybody that, you know what I mean? Everybody that supports the media narratives on anything is silenced. And then, you know, not that I'm anything special. I just, I had the right mission at the right time, I guess. Because if you think about it, if you were a god or a goddess and you're going to make something matter to the whole world, you would do it in this time and age because... You could have, like, there already should be a movie about my story. But if there's a movie about my story, the whole world will know it in one year. Every Everybody on Earth will have seen the movie. Okay. Like, there's, that's where the, that's where, like, there's the story part of it that makes it a miraculous story. And then there's the drama part of it that makes the movie. And I'll give you two, two things that make it a movie. And there's probably 50. So the one thing is the guy that tortured me lived on this lake across from my girlfriend, right? And he would come over on a jet ski and you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, so that, was, but there was a freaking plane that came down in his backyard on the lake. He lived on the lake. So yeah. a private, somebody on a private plane, private, private plane crashed 
right in front of his fucking car. He lived in a trailer. And he gets on his jet ski, Joe Cool, goes out, pulls the guy out of the freaking uh, airplane right before it explodes, saves his life. Wow. The freaking vans and shit from the uh, TV and the paramedics and whatever are parked all outside his house. My girlfriend drives by on her way home and sees all this shit in front of her, in front of his house, right? She goes home, turns on TV. There he is being interviewed. Joe Cool saves the guy's life. I'm laying on, on my back near death from him torturing me and tortured because he's fucking, she's in love with him. And all of a sudden she sees him as his hero. It's like, it couldn't be worse, right? It couldn't be worse. Well, then I'm like, what I'm listening to. Trust no bitch. That's what they say. But anyway, go ahead. So I'm listening to my uh, CD of Radiohead over and over. I mean, I was into Radiohead. That's all I listened to for like three years. I had five CD thing. And five CDs of Radiohead, and it just kept going around, around, around Radiohead, right? So I find I'm listening. I don't really listen to lyrics because they don't really do much in Radiohead, you know. But there's a lyric in one of the songs called "Lucky," I think it is. It's like, "Pull me out of the air crash, pull me out of the lake." Freaking impossible. The guy pulls him out of the. So you get a movie, right, where the guy, the torture, the bad guy, freaking saves the guy's life from a plane, right? And uh, she's in love with him. It just couldn't get worse for me, right? That's one thing. And then another thing is when I was, before I got tortured or anything, when I was kind of being pretty successful at real estate and I was good with women, I could talk to them on the phone. And uh, like this lady, real estate lady wanted to uh, see one of my listings and I like hook up with her, right? We like go to the listing and it's an old house with freaking mice. It's kind of run down. So rental, the guy moved to Florida. He listed with me. So anyway, we go upstairs and we're like, you know, in the house and the neighbors are like watching. They like come in and like, what's going on in here? And, and I come down with freaking, you know, sporting wood shit. And they're like, so they call the real estate company like guys in there fucking a chick, you know? And uh, so I, or wait, you're fucking point, your bitch? No, I was, I was fucking a random chick in a uh, real estate agent in the top, in the second story of this house. And I came down the stairs because this, the neighbor came in and said, what the hell's going on in here? You so know, wait, you were still with your like girlfriend? Me. You were fucking some random? No, this is before, 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 before. Okay, okay. This is before, before. This is when I was being super successful before I got tortured, before anything really bad happened. So uh, We just jumped in the timeline, though. You realize Yeah, that, yeah, right? jumped back. So okay, well, you have so this is what makes, part anyway. of what makes the movie, yeah. right? So like, okay. uh, I'm like thinking, okay, how the fuck do I get out of this situation? You know, how the fuck? So I, there was mice in the house. It was an older house, right? And uh, so I spent the night that I went and bought some mouse traps. I spent the night in the house. We can put mouse traps all over every, every hour. Or so I'd hear a snap and there'd be a mouse, right? So I threw them all out in the front. Then I wake up. I never slept really, maybe an hour. And I wake up and the office lady is on the phone. You need to come skip, in the skip, office skip, right skip, now. Skip. Yeah, yeah. What happened? You need to come in the office right now. And I'm like, I took, I'm like, what do I do? Okay, I put a, a freaking peanut butter and all these mouse traps and I put them in the laundry area, right? Close the door because there was a showing that day. And I'm like, I don't want people to see the mouse traps. So I've hit them kind of in the freaking laundry area. But there was no laundry thing. It was just empty closet. But uh, I go in the office and the lady lied for me as well. I lied. No, we weren't fucking, you know, we were just, we were talking and I took my shirt off because I'm on this mission to be real. And if I'm hot, I take my shirt yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I took my shirt off in the office and I did, you know, I was like that. I was doing that kind of shit. I'm in a freaking business office. I'm hot. I take off my fucking shirt. Just, I did, I was real. I was really, really trying to be real. Like, let's not freaking play the freaking society game. I'm freaking hot. My shirt's coming off. And I was built at the time, so I wasn't ashamed of that. But uh, then, um, I tell her all this, the lady, the other real estate lady says, I'm a Christian woman. Are you suggesting anything happened? Right. So like, then she's under pressure. Oh fuck. I can't accuse this Christian woman of fucking this guy in the house. Right. So she goes to the house, which is only five minutes away from the real estate office. Right. And this is the biggest real estate office in Coeur d'Alene. Super, yeah. super big, big, you know, professional. They go, she goes into the house. I'm like sitting in her office, just waiting. Do, 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 do. Every single mouse trap had a freaking mouse in it by that time because of the mice were coming in through the dryer vent. Uh, of the, you know, there was a hole. They didn't plug it. Right. When they moved, when they moved out, there was a freaking yeah, big yeah, hole. Okay, there. get to the conclusion of this. Story. Every freaking, every freaking uh, mouse trap had a mouse. So she gave me my freaking lockbox back. She said, "I apologize for the misunderstanding. I didn't get fired." But the problem is, is that was like the, that was like the tip over point where it's like I was a liar because reality's got me pretending like six, 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 die, and I really tried to do that, but then I was, right. I was a fucking scum liar. I got, now, then my 
self-esteem there. Blah, blah, blah. Do you believe That's in hard. gravity? Is anti-gravity possible? I do not believe that gravity causes black holes. That they're, I think it's pressure, and and I don't, I I know for a fact that the gra that the black hole in my soul no, is no. caused by a change in pressure. All right, I'll so just ask I do you. suspect I that gravity right. isn't. I do suspect that gravity isn't real. Okay, do but you, I don't know. Let me ask you: Who would you rather meet, Hitler or the singer Prince? Hitler. There's questions about Hitler. There's no question about Prince. What kind of questions about Hitler? What he really thought. At least for me, I don't really know because you're not really allowed to read about it. You don't really know. Everybody says all this shit, but is it all true? I don't know. I would want to know because they say he was into this uh, oh, weird religion shit. I don't know. That, that he had they say a lot of things about Hitler. Antarctica shit under the, you know, all, all this shit they say that I have no idea, you know, that there were, you know, the scientific shit in German, uh, in Germany was way ahead of the time. And a lot of the UFO shit is actually German, uh, aeronautics shit, you know, so just, I would have a million questions for Hitler, none for Prince. Do you like Prince's music? Some, not really. So Hitler definitely, definitely. <laughs> what would be a few questions? Ada Wolf's here too. I'll let him get a couple questions in here in a second. But what would be a few questions you would ask Hitler? Besides what you just mentioned. So uh, did you do anything in Antarctica, or is that all made up? Did you intend to start a world war when you invaded Poland? Because you know a lot of the history says that uh, the only reason Germany went into Poland at that time was because. They partitioned off part of Poland to, you know, at the end of World War One, they said, yeah. "Here, Poland, you can have this many German, this much Germany," and so that there were all these Germans. Yeah. There were Germans living in Poland. There were. Yeah. So Hitler went in there to rescue them, basically, and then that started World War Two. And you know, did did Hitler actually decide to go to war against Europe, or did he just want to uh, rescue the Poles or the Germans in Poland? And did he really view the Aryan race as the superior race as far as was it Germans only or was it whites or, you know, did he actually have those stringent kind of psychopathic racial ideas? Because in my view, the best people in the world are uh, Japanese. You're a you weeb? Know, Japanese are the best people in the world. Wait, wait, you're opinion. a weeb? Is that what that is? I don't know. Yeah. All I know is their society works the best, probably because it's a, a lot because it's homogeneous. But their society is the best society. Have you been to Japan? From my, from what I've seen, and I met a Japanese girl, thankfully. <laughs> you have a Japanese girlfriend? I had one for a little while. Like cute, perfect. It was like a, <laughs> like a doll. The skin was like a doll. It was just perfect skin. It's nice when they have good skin. And just adorable, sweet personality. Just couldn't possibly imagine a, a normal American girl having that being that sweet. Just it just doesn't happen. We don't need to get started on women. All right, and it could, be, it could be it could be because they're a second language and they have to be very slow about what they say. If they go on and on and on and on and on, you might eventually get out of here. <laughs> but that's pretty much what you already have to be with American girls. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> this Get out of here. Yeah. Because they just talk like way no, too much. Well, I know. Uh, I know all about that. Uh, now, uh, Ada Wolf, did you have any questions? I might just open it up if people want to call in. I might just throw the Hangout link out. I never do that. But uh, Ada Wolf, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? So did you have any questions? Hey. Yeah, uh, I, you know, you, you were talking about this guy, the way you were describing him. Do you feel like this uh, this guy that tortured you, do you feel like he was possibly a demon? Well, there's uh, there's two more coincidences. One is that uh, the town where the man-made lake was built, where I decided to put it, I decided to put it in a, he wanted to put it on a five acre. Uh, we have this rule because we have an aquifer that lots have to be at least five acres unless they have uh, city sewer because of sewage leaking into the aquifer. It's very, very clean water under there. It's like huge, it's, it's very stringently protected, right? 
It's one of the reasons I moved here. So uh, Rathrum had room. They had city water and sewer, and their prices were a little lower because it's north of town. It's not the it's not the uh, ritzy Coeur d'Alene area, right? So that's where I put it. And the idea was to have small lots, small houses on a lake, and you have waterfront for a reasonable price. That was my marketing idea for the real estate development, right? In the town of Rathrum. Well, the town of Rathrum had a reputation like years earlier, which I had heard of and which I had kind of sensed when I drove when I first kind of changed in the subject that look, 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 look. No, it'll lead into it. Don't worry. So I like drove into this into this mountain to kind of I was just checking out the first day I was ever here in Coeur d'Alene area. And I felt like this ominous presence, like, don't go up there. You know, I was like, just I'm not gonna put any not anywhere near the credibility of the rest of the story, but I did feel like don't go up there. <laughs> Bad shit up there. So I turned around, right? So the, they had devil worship going on around you, and they had sacrifices and all that shit had a reputation to wrap them which you know didn't mean much to me at the time but when the, the demons started did, torturing you it did the freaking then the 666 shit and the lake looks like a snake it looks like it's man's serpent it looks like a serpent that there's an island right there's like kind of a snake shape and then you can drive onto the island so there's an inner land mass with like 40 lots and then around the thing is another like 70 or 80 lots and there's like another 120 or 130. So uh, the lake looks like a snake and, or a man serpent or some kind of demon thing that you drive onto the island and then it squishes you and eats you and you know, all that type thing. So that, there was that. And then the 666 thing and the court thing. But strangely enough, this is another thing that's freaking bizarre, but I don't know what it means. I think it has some meaning because on 12 before 12, 21, 12, I was thinking about doing a party at the uh Kootenai fairgrounds to to rent uh you know one of their things and have like high school kids or you know whatever over for a end of the world party right end of the world uh 12 21 12 end of the world but i, I put i made this thread on can't remember what's uh, was lunatic outpost.com right i made Luna, uh end of the world religions party 12 21 12 i made this thread new age messiah and like is you know i was kind of not that dominant there you know but uh quite a few posts and pages but it there was one point where it came up six six hundred and sixty six views sixty six pages six something six 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 this massive number of six right so i screenshotted it end of the world religions party 12 21 12 and then all these six 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 <laughs> but that has nothing to do with him but i don't i don't think he was a demon necessarily but he definitely has every characteristic that you would consider demonic but okay. he he read the right. bible and he was you know a typical okay. typical non right. he wasn't very deep all right Adam. i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna go with demon on that one and you know you were talking about these mirrors nightwave radio these sent two dollars well. uh zero but, zero uh, on are you Rumble. selling these mirrors Do gabe hoffman is a font hat can create metaphysical changes in humans is that what you were trying to talk about when you said they were giving you physical and spiritual experiences no, Shout out to Nightway, by the way. I appreciate that. We got to do that crossover on Gabe soon. We, we were going through his shit earlier. I've been telling everybody this guy's a fucking rat, uh, and there's only one reason he's here uh, in the sector, so to speak, and it's to fucking control the speech the way he wants it, uh, which is not talking about Zionism. But anyway. Um, there's the Gabe. If you what do you know about Gabe, Gabe Hoffman? A lot. What? I was hardcore into Isaac Cappy when uh, he got killed. Gabe Hoffman drove. Wait, wait, don't say anything. Wait, you're speaking for yourself. I just want to be clear. Uh, don't say. Be yeah. careful. This guy's litigious. Um, <laughs> well, a lot of people thought that Gabe put Cappy, and Cappy was very, very affected by Gabe's. Uh, really? Yeah. I, didn't follow, I, I just heard about that kind of after it happened. I didn't know he. he how was yeah. he affected? What did Gabe do to him? Allegedly, according to you. Well, he did the same shit that he's doing to everybody else on the internet. He just says, he said Cappy was full of shit. He didn't have any evidence. He was hurting the movement of, uh, you know, finding pedophiles and shit. And Cappy was a, just a fuck up and he had no credibility and he was a piece of shit. Is basically what Gabe was saying. And, you know, Cappy's freaking putting it all out there and knew all these people. And uh, it turned out to be right, as far as I'm concerned. And Gabe was full of shit. But, 
it, but it was, it, you know, Cappy ended up supposedly committing suicide and shit, you know. So yeah, no, I heard like, about that. A lot of fingers pointing in different directions, but Gabe Cappy hated Gabe Hoffman more than he hated anybody. Is what you the rage you're expressing for Gabe is the same rage that Cappy. Oh, had. you heard that earlier. Yeah, yeah I was one. It sounds like Gabe Hoffman was torturing this guy, kind of like that guy was torturing you. No, there's nothing like. No, there's no like that, come on, Idol. No, people and and I'm used to it. People make they they got their own worldview. And they try to nothing's like this. I they try to mold it. my shit into their worldview. Yeah, I sucks. never said anything like you said that I said about the mirrors, but you put it into your mind. I looked at my heart in the mirror. I closed Maybe? my eyes. Inside You're, talking my heart. You're not talking to me. No, for my yeah, I'm talking to Beowulf or whatever his okay. name is. Yeah, Adolf, Adolf Wolf, Beowulf. Beowulf was a good. One. I read that. Beowulf's book, close but, enough, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I I never said the mirrors had any power whatsoever. I said that I looked my heart in the mirror instead of my image. I saw a light. And then miracle jewelry, because look your heart in the mirror, just symbolizes that the true you is in your heart, not in the mirror. Had nothing to do with what you're saying. The guy put the first one on, and he had the first silver one anyway, you know. And he had an experience he can't describe, a surge of power. All the shit to me was just the goddess or divinity or Whatever, you know, however you want to say it, was just communicating to me you're on the right track. This shit is real. Keep going because I was going through shit. And you can't, I mean, no one else on earth would be alive except me. And only because of the circumstances where I was on a mission, I had a revelation, God has spoke to me, and there were miracles. Absent those four things, I'm dead 20 years ago, a thousand times over. And I'm not making that up. I'd be so fucking dead. You can't even imagine. And the mirrors have no power whatsoever. Other than to symbolize the true you is in your heart, not in the mirror. And it's a revelation. Look your heart in the mirror. People are obsessed with their mirror image. I was totally obsessed with my mirror image. I couldn't go out unless my hair was perfect. I absolutely looked. If To me, I was probably more than anybody obsessed with my image in the mirror. So it broke my, uh, it broke my, because I looked like shit. All of a sudden, Mr. Mr. I pose GQ. I tried to be a model. You know, I could have been. Uh, I had well, it, so, it sounds like the uh, it sounds like the goddess is punishing you for your vanity. That's what it sounds like to me. No, I'm more rewarded than any person on earth. On earth, I'm the I'm the hero of the greatest true story ever told. I'm the most miraculous person in human history. What about the greatest story never told? I I don't know about that. Oh, that that's a movie, right? I, think I so. like that about Germany. Like, I like that, that movie. Yeah, I did <laughs> watch it. But what I, what I will say critique in critique of that movie is that it never once mentioned the Gestapo. So I view it as uh, propaganda, not necessarily fact. The movie never mentioned Gestapo and the freaking secret police going in and what they did and what they were up to, you know. But I do think that it does open your eyes as to a lot of things that you would never hear otherwise. But no, I, I never the goddess. I never the goddess that. spoke to me. She made all these miracles. You could say that pride comes before our fall, and I was Mr. Cool, Mr. Cocky, Mr. I can screw any girl I want. I'm famous on the internet. Mr. You know, Still your bitch. I, I'm married with a girlfriend. The guy said I was a god. I showed up with my best friend at the time. You know, I had my wife with me, and I was just hooked up with a girl. Uh, Chats my wife was saying, I'll just go out. All this shit, it. you know what I mean? It's like all this shit where you could say, yeah, you probably did your wife, did she say that was okay? Yeah. They're she full met of shit. You can't believe them when they say that, man. Like they're lying. No, it was okay. We no, got along. Never we okay. got along. I mean, we women are the true demons. It was her honest. parents. It's never okay. It's never okay. Her Jay. parents found Sorry. out and made her get a divorce and they bought her house. They had money and they just said, you're, you're going to be taken care of. We're going to, you're going to divorce that motherfucker. And you're going to be taken care of. We're going to buy your house, whatever, you know, get him out of there. And they came when they flew into town uh, by surprise. I was in the basement. She came down and said, I'm divorcing you with her parents upstairs. Her, her parents were, you were fucking around. That's what I'm telling you. They're never cool. Well, yeah, with that, Jay. yeah. Oh, absolutely. The parents weren't cool. She, we were getting Nobody's, along great. They're not cool with it. They just do that to be like, oh, pick me. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're trying to be i'm different from the other girls and da, 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 da. And you think you got no, like, like you know a like golden that. goose there or whatever, and then do they don't really way. they don't really believe that though it's like self-harm basically uh that's what i think i'm not gonna go too far into that that's not important 
Okay, so you know, at the beginning of this, you were talking about how you you were here to like you know destroy religions, and so what's your answer to that then? What's your alternative answer to the masses? Well, first of all, they're proved false because the goddess is real and she's actually doing something, and the miracles are provable and they're real and they're mixed into society, and every single miracle in every single religion is bullshit that has no except your uh, actually. No, it, you can't. I can prove mine. They're absolutely fact. And they're real. They're mixed into society. They're woven in like freaking carpet. They're like freaking woven in to to what really happens. And they prove um, it, every single miracle can be made up by any idiot. Jesus walked on water. So Jesus fed five thousand with two loaves. So and one solving fish. lost isn't it like that's a miracle? No, it, it's a just a sign. It's woven into the story okay. that. It's amazing that the only person in the world to solve lost says he's a new age messiah. There was tons of mirror imagery type shit in lost. I mean, mirrors were one of the main themes. And then the goddess is on the freaking wall. The goddess who spoke to me, which is arguable, it might be Isis. I don't know who they had on the wall with Isis. Mos or Isis. But it's a picture of a bird goddess, you know. That's oh, that's you the, mean the god Isis, not okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the goddess Isis picture was on the wall. <clears throat> So, now, wait uh, a minute, Ralph. <laughs> I was thinking about something else. I thought Gabe had entered the chat there for a second. Uh, <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, so so how does a regular, human, like, how, how would Ralph and I get on board with this new religion? That's my main question, I guess. Well, it isn't. The thing is that the everything everybody considers about religion to be real religion or whatever, that's all uh, fake. So, like. In my opinion, this is just, and like I say, I'm not enlightened yet, and I might have a better perspective, be able to explain shit better. But in my opinion, everything you've taught, I think worship is fake and gay. I think prayer is ridiculous. Having witnessed for a fact that the goddess, at least, and maybe there's all kinds of other gods and goddesses I don't know about, but the goddess that spoke to me, 100% omniscient, 100% omnipotent, knows every effing thing. There's nothing you can tell them. Nothing. You, I never said a single prayer. I'm laying near death. I could go to a church and say, oh, poor me. I got tortured. Please help me. I never walked into a church to ask for a damn thing. Never would. Never changed my position whatsoever. Even when I'm near death, I thought this can't be the final answer. I was on a mission. I meant, well, whatever you want to say, this can't be the final answer in my life. I can't be. This can't be it. There has to be more. There has yeah, to be better. I had faith. Yeah, go ahead. I had faith. I had faith, but not in a story. If you believe a story, that doesn't mean you have faith. That's another thing. That's a trick. If you believe the story, it means you have faith. No. If you have to believe a story, it's not faith. Because faith comes from just observing what the fuck is going on and having a feeling that there's intelligence behind it or goodness behind it. Or and then if you want to put a name on it, you know, you got to declare a mission to go in the depths of the human condition and find something new that no. nobody ever found. Shut sacrifice it. yourself get tortured and then fucking have a revelation nobody I, else i, I don't think that. anybody else is going to give be given that kind of information i don't so want to get tortured so so you're only you don't you don't gain anything by by believing a fucking stupid story all you do is get mind tricked and then, and then you get into this fucking thing and it separates people right so like look your heart mirror what i the religion name that i made up is called the milky way because goddess milky the way the milky way so i made the milky way dot global and it's the biggest world religion because everybody's in it the milky way so anytime here's is my thing anytime that a religion says anonymous is in five dollars he needs some believers a believers infidels really you know belonging jewish goy any of this shit that divides people into classes based on what they believe or think or whatever is fucked up it's just a political movement it's just trying to gain power through and that's I like Adam Green has been on your show, which is very, uh, very respectable. Uh, yeah, opinion. I like Adam Green a lot. He's a good like he's like he said, which I had never had. He totally opened my eyes. He said because I always thought, why in the sure you love that endorsement? Up, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Why in the hell would they make up all this stupid shit? But he has it nailed. He's like, they wanted to conquer Rome. They couldn't do it with weapons, so they used religion to get uh, the Romans to believe their shit in their god. And they used uh, Christianity to do it. It's like that. Damn, that's freaking. That's why they did it. Because why in the hell would you make that shit up, other than like a psyop to take people over? Which we damn know. <laughs> we know that goes on every day in America. You know that's what they do. Your God's chosen you, people. 
Do you think the Jews then killed Cleopatra because she would have most likely taken over and brought in the Egyptian religion, and then your religion would be everywhere instead of Christianity? I don't know. All I here's what here's. I don't know anything about. Like I say, I was not an Egyptologist. I had no idea about anything Egyptian. I freaking got spoken to by a goddess. I don't have the wherewithal to study all this shit. You know, I know a little bit about Cleopatra. It's nothing to speak of. I don't know who killed her or why at all. But I have never read that the Egyptians sacrificed animals or people, or maybe they did, but I've never read they did. I never read that they conquered other nations. I never read that they thought themselves the chosen anything. All the fucked up shit about the fucked up religions, I don't see any of it in Egyptian. I do see the laws of Mott, which are like, 50 times better than the Ten Commandments. If you just read through them, you're like, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Not that I necessarily say these are the laws of Mott. I don't even know. I, I only speak of what I know. And those rules are way better than the Ten Commandments or anything in the Bible. You know, the Bible's messed up. This is totally fucked up. The, the parable of the Ten Virgins is the stupidest thing that's ever written. It's supposedly by the Son of God, you know? Well, I mean, Egyptians are very animals. They would mummify cats and other things and bury them. Yeah, they, do, they do some things that I would think that's kind of stupid, but you know, bear in mind they don't know. There's things they don't know. Cats and who awesome. knows even who built the pyramids if they're even built before people think. You know, I don't think we know who built the pyramids or how. Yeah, so, I think that would be my biggest hurdle is joining you on this journey is the fact that the Egyptians did sacrifice cats because I'm a big cat guy. They sacrificed. So I don't know if I could get a no. They oh, worship yeah. cats. They for the Egyptians thought the yeah, cats. Yeah, you lying were, about. The Sphinx is Tefnut. Uh, it's uh, Tefnut is a cat being. There's this lady. Well, I mean, on... they would they would kill the Pharaoh's cat when he died and bury the you know mummify the cat. Oh, it's so the Pharaoh could have a cat in the afterlife. Though. Yeah, so they could have it in the afterlife. Yeah, they but, got some you know, weird. They definitely see. This is the thing. You don't need to believe that shit is real. You don't need to believe what they did made sense. You know, but and I don't necessarily. I don't disbelieve or believe it. I don't care. I don't rely on belief for anything. Like I say, I'm the one guy. That doesn't have to believe a fucking thing because I know one thing for a fact, which in religious terms, nobody else knows a single fucking thing for a fact. You know, maybe a few people, somebody knew because they wrote Tell down. Tell us something names. humanity doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, we we're, we brought you in here for an interview. I want I want the deep the deep lore. I want to know what you know that you haven't told us yet. I I want to know the deep dark secrets of, of what this goddess is telling you. Because otherwise, I can just go read a history. She's book, very you know? angry. And she's cooking. That's all. And there is stories about Tefnut being very freaking vengeful or pissed off and destroying freaking shit and going, you know. So she might do so, but I don't know what she's going to do. And, and she hasn't really given me any clues except for that continually minor synchronicity type things happen, you know, that are like things that normal people would be like, yeah, that's a that's freaking very big credit god or you know whatever they'd be like wow that's god working god works works in mysterious ways you know they'd be like those would fit normally in people's experience that they normally experience miracle type things happen they're minor my the big ones in my story are freaking major they're world freaking shattering miracles the ones that are happening day to day every day lately are just normal um but i can tell you absolutely for a fact that the egyptian goddess tefna is real She's alive. She's omnipotent. She's om omnipresent. She's very angry, and she's cooking. And that's let her cook. That's she's gonna freaking do some shit. I think, or I don't even know that for a fact. That might be already it. That's a, that might be all her last word, and that might all, be all she does. And then is that what she me. really meant? Let her cook. Is that what she? Yeah, I'm cooking. I, you know, I'm cooking, and it, because this is after like eight, eight to ten mega miracles that are like mind-blowing and like where who the fuck is doing this what the fuck is going on what am i why am i still laying here broke deranged tortured freaking near death and uh helpless and everybody abandoned me and what the hell is going on i'm very angry tefnet cooking oh okay never mind it's all good <laughs> and it, it took me seriously like took me like a month to figure out her name was at least a month to figure out her name was Tefnut. That was her name. That it was Tefnut. She was an Egyptian goddess. And I started learning all this shit. You know. But I do think that worship is stupid because 
uh, there's no possible way, knowing what I know about her, of her experiencing her, there's absolutely nothing in my soul. Maybe once I'm enlightened, it could be a little different. Maybe I'm talking shit. But I know for most people, there's nothing in their soul worthy of communication with a God. And there's nothing a God doesn't already know. And so you, what is prayer? You know, they already know what you want. They already know what you need. They already know what's going on. Your prayer ain't going to do a fucking thing. You know, maybe it'll seem like it. But if you think about prayers, how many times have Christians on the Internet gone wild praying for some shit and then it doesn't? You know, they just, I think it's all virtue signaling. Oh, we're gonna pray for that. We're gonna pray for that. We're gonna pray for that. And you know, just nine times out of ten, doesn't it, you know the bad shit happens if they're praying? Doesn't happen. And then once in a while, the good shit happens. Oh, look what the Lord has done. But when the bad shit happens, silence. That was God's will. You know, whatever. So no, nothing about Christianity. I call it Christ insanity. And so you know, all you got to do is change like yeah. one letter or something. Change it from Christianity to Christ insanity. The whole thing's freaking insane. Believer burn is. Uh, is uh, what they call it terrorism. If you don't believe this shit, you're gonna burn in hell forever. You tell that to a kid, it's fucking evil. And so, so like my my thing is, if you're so cocky that you can tell people they'll burn in hell if they don't believe your shit, what about if you're around telling people this shit and it's false, and there actually are consequences for telling people that that it's false? I don't think there are. You know, what should uh, the consequence be? Well, I have no idea. But the, in the story of the Egyptian, if your heart is full of evil deeds, you uh, get eaten by the crocodile. They, yeah, I figured it was basically. They about. throw your heart in the crocodile's mouth, and then you're gone. Whereas if you if you did good deeds, whatever, if your heart is pure, and it doesn't, there's a feather of mott in one side of the scale, and it puts your heart in the other. And if the scale is even or whatever, you go on to do some kind of thing in the afterlife. And if it isn't. You're eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> You're done. So that's to me, and I don't even know for a fact. That's just I would never bank on that at all. Believe it or, I have an experience of being out of body. Like uh, I twirl uh, in Grateful Dead concerts. They twirl. I've never seen this. I never knew about it. I only found out after I twirled. But I went on the dance floor. I was the only person on the dance floor. You know, pretty crowded place. Yeah. And I started twirling like a helicopter. All right. And letting it, might, letting it all go, right? And then all of a sudden, I was like in figure skaters when they go, oh, just faster than you think. And in my inner world, I'm sure my outer world, I was just going normal speed. But in my inner world, I started going like one of the freaking ice skaters. And then I went out of body and I went up into the universe like as a speck into the into the great vast. Now, let me ask, because I, I saw some people questioning your website or whatever, because they they were looking at the website about the jewelry. They said it looked like it was made for like little kids, basically, or little girls or something. I how do you see some kids on there now? Uh, I mean, you actually, can sell to kids. I mean, I, I don't think that that makes it unethical necessarily. Um, but uh, well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So when I first started, you know, I made the students of repentant after making hundreds of them out of clay, right? So you can go into Joanne's, you can buy polymer clay in 20 different colors. You can buy craft mirrors. You can spend, used to be, and they're getting more expensive to clay, but you can spend 30 bucks and have enough mirrors and clay for 500 pennants, but who's gonna buy them? Kids, because they're colorful, sure. easy to make, inexpensive, put it on a rope, set up a stand. And and I had, there was a school that had a, a program on Sherman Avenue in Coeur d'Alene. And I had rented uh, a spot right on the sidewalk in a parking lot. There was a, like a, a spot where you end right there. So I put my stand right there. Well, it turns out the school, the art school, had their program every spring and the first day I show up there for my new stand, right, they come and they're going to have a, a program and they usually do it in that parking lot. And like, here's my stand. And they're like, can you move your stand back? Because I rent it. They didn't rent it. They were just donated the parking. You know? So I had to rent. So I could I could say, no, you could. This is my I rented this spot. You can't be here. I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. You're going to tell a school they can't have the spot. Right. So I moved my stand all the way back uh, and I had these polymer clay uh, jewelries, little jewelries. Uh, cute, colorful, you know, and I made headbands with a mirror on it. And these kids that were in this program, there's like 50, 60 kids, right? And all their parents were right there. The whole town, you know, there's probably a thousand people all together all right. watching the program, kids in the program. They swarmed my table. They freaking wore the shit. And I just, it just, 
comes naturally that it was good product for kids because they like to they like to walk around and shine the mirror. It's a big deal for them to have like a little uh, a toy type thing with their jewelry. And I like when I first declared my mission. Right when I when I first when I first declared my mission, I said I don't believe it to the Bible because it was about the genocide, God supposedly uh, ordering genocide. And I had been a Christian, a hardcore Christian for like 10 years, you know, hardcore Bible study and going to church. I was an elder in a church. I freaking visited the sick. I, you know what I mean? I did everything you do as a Christian. And uh, finally, I said, I don't believe it because of the genocide stuff and a couple other things. But when I said, I don't believe it, there was like this weight lifted off my shoulder, blah, blah, blah. I declared a mission. I'm going to find something new to replace it. Um, okay. What I wanted to do was find something for children especially for children so the people who because i felt like in my childhood something was missing in my growing up i lacked information and i was on my own i didn't feel it and you know religion didn't do it i thought of uh buddhism i'm like buddhism all this chanting weird shit that doesn't do it you know nothing in existence nothing in existence had worked to give me the kind of life i felt like i had deserved or wanted as a kid growing up and you know, eventually just there were missing pieces in me that I felt. And so I thought, and, and also I thought kids being told to burn in hell forever if they don't believe in Jesus, that was just fucking, you know, that was sick shit. I need to replace it. So kids were in my heart from the very beginning. And innocence of children, uh, very important. The innocence of a child is what I was kind of striving for as an adult. And uh, the kid stuff is very popular. As soon as I put it out there, like I'll put a table full of kid stuff. We have a street fair in Coeur d'Alene where People walk by instantly. Mom, you know, just oh, sells like mad when it when it's out there and there's people. Wow. But you know, you can't afford to sit in a store, rent a store, you know. Yeah. yeah. But I, absolutely, everybody's going to come to that. Oh, there's something to do with kids. He's a pedo. I've been called a pedo probably ten thousand times. It's like yeah. Well, I didn't say that. Some people in chat. Were no, no. Like, but people, it's just the first thing that comes to people's head. Everything the first people thing comes ahead is negative always every time times a million everyone's all the same no one's any different negative instant negative oh you said you're spoken to by goddess oh you said you're in Mary's Messiah everything negative you can possibly attribute to me is instantly in everyone's mind with almost no acceptance it's just it's just the way it is and that's part of being the new age messiah is you, you're fucked no matter what you do no one's gonna believe you no one's gonna care you know, you're tortured, you get, you know, I had to climb up to survive it today. Uh, you know, there's a thing, the hero's journey, uh, that what's his name? I don't know, but he had the hero's journey that they copied for star Wars, Looks, where they used oh, it for yeah. Hollywood stuff. I said, I found this wheel, the hero's journey and everything. There's the bottom where it's like the abyss and a revelation. And then there's the, the goddess, the gift of the goddess there, you know, it's like, it's like the hero's journey is exactly in my freaking story, but you know, nobody will fucking put two and two together. There's ooh, hero's journey. They might say something nice about her. Oh, my hero's journey. But my story exactly matches the hero's journey down to the abyss and the revelation and the goddess and, and a mission and all this shit. It's exactly my story. Probably no one else's is like that on earth, but mine is, but who cares? You know, I get that all the fucking time. It's, I started to be, I mean, I was in world news and shit and I did solve laws and they're at, Every site I'm on, just about, I get like totally way more uh, clicks on the on discussion on the forums and all. That. One guy on Godlike Productions said, "New Age Messiah is the greatest poster on this or any other forum," and that was as a tortured beggar. I was writing on the forum, and I had that. I made uh, Sean Hannity's forum freaking explode. And then uh, what's his name? Keith Olbermann uh, came over and saw what I wrote. And he went on freaking his show and he's like, Sean Hannity, blah, 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 is the worst person in the world. Well, I know for a fact that he read my uh, shit where I said, basically, I'm the, I'm the tug of war. There's a tug of war between the left and the right. And the right is like, what, they, what did I call it? The uh, wretched righteousness of the right and the lion left. And they're pulling on, pulling, pulling, pulling. And I just come and cut the freaking rope. And they both fall on their ass. And I said, and I said some, you know, God type shit. I didn't even, I wasn't spoken to by the goddess by then, but I knew I, I knew I freaking lit a freaking huge bomb, which you can kind of feel. It's like, that's a freaking bomb. man. so I walked out for like 20 minutes. I'm like, I gotta freaking walk out. I come back. 
There's like 50 posts have been deleted, 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 deleted. The, the freaking uh, moderator from Hannity deleted, deleted, deleted a bunch of posts that were up there. And then like an hour later, Oberman's on TV saying Sean Hannity is the worst person in the world, blah, 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 blah. Like, so, you know, I freaking... So you did that to Sean Hannity? Well, they eventually banned me because I talked about Rush Limbaugh, in, you know, uh, in a negative way. But they, uh, they wouldn't like that. But I did, I did make Olbermann have a shit fit, and you know, that even though. Do you, think, do you do you think that Keith Olbermann is a demon? I think I don't. I don't attribute the word demon to people. Uh, I do think that anyone that is a Zionist or whatever you want to say, Israel, any anyone that believes Jews are chosen people, anyone who believes uh, that there's some sort of uh, reckoning to be done by the God of Israel or, you know, even the Muslim ideas, whatever they are, I haven't really researched them, but they seem to think uh, infidels deserve death or, you know, who knows? I haven't, I haven't really researched that. I do find little Muslims would be a little less offensive lately because they're uh, stick trying to, you know, basically sticking up for Gaza, which. Yeah, I because of... they're fighting against the Jews. I get it. Um, so what do you think about black people, demon or not? No, not demon. I do think they're uh, genetically or whatever different. And you can't, I think racism. Inferior? Basically... Definitely in certain ways inferior, but definitely in certain ways uh, superior. In which ways are they inferior? Uh, intelligence. You just think they're a bunch of dumb niggas? <laughs> Not, uh, <laughs> no, I just think, you know, by the way, I'll clarify. It's just, it's just like I just saw an article. Uh, I'm black. It's okay. Oh, yeah, that's I'm, true. I just saw an article on uh, Twitter about how to choose the most intelligent dog breed. It's like, well, it's no different if you're going to choose an intelligent human breed. I mean, there's Jews are extremely intelligent. Uh, Chinese are extremely intelligent. Japanese are, very, you know, probably other people are very intelligent. You know, there's basically a lower IQ with blacks, which you can't deny, but there's also like a massive superiority physically. So and, you're you're into like Egypt, right? Egyptology, the gods. No, no, I barely study it. I don't care what anybody says about it. You literally have a fucking Egyptian symbol, like two Egyptian symbols right behind you. Though. Well, that's because an Egyptian <laughs> goddess spoke to me, but she spoke to me. I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and I'm American, and she spoke in perfect English. So I don't think she gives a fuck about Egypt. She spoke to you in Idaho? I'm in Idaho. She spoke to me here while I was laying in my bed. What did she say? I'm, I'm, very, I'm sorry. I'm very angry, tough nut cooking. What did you uh, interpret that? At, like, cause that's that's kind of a vague. So it's vague if you don't have the context. But the context is she had done like ten earth-shattering miracles, massive, unbelievable, spectacular miracles, uh, that I was aware of, but I didn't know who was doing them. And she said, "I'm very angry, tough nut cooking." So she she explained who was doing the miracles and and that she was real and that you know it took me a month or two to figure out who she was. Was it any blacks who were doing the cooking? <laughs> I don't know. I do think I do. Uh, my first <laughs> kind of like, what does this mean spiritually for me? Was that whites fucked over American Indians really bad? That's not true. The, the natural. That just said that's was my first. Uh, I'm just saying that's not true. Whatever. No, I mean, you're just lying. If you say that whites fucked over the Indians, that's not true. Well, we massacred them. No, we didn't. Well, yeah, the, the freaking... I'm from Rapid City, South Dakota. We had the freaking reservations and all this shit. And what, are you a fucking Indian? No. You were fucking doing powwows to make the rain. No. Um, with a dance. no, they just... The you didn't even have fucking irrigation. What do you mean? All I'm saying is that the Indians had what I believe to be a more, at least, like I say, I don't know, but from what I read, the Indians believed in the great spirit, and it was spiritual, and they they had 
a more spiritual view. They didn't believe a bunch of bullshit stories about, uh, you know, sticks turning into state snakes and you know what I mean? It's like believe or burn and all this religious crap. They didn't have that. They had a natural appreciation for reality and the way that the, the cycles of nature worked and you know what I mean? They had a, what I would no, call I don't, a, I don't know more what you real mean. faith. Explain it. What do you mean? What did the white man take away from the fucking great well, Indian like, people? For instance, when the when the Indians would kill one buffalo to eat it because they needed it to survive, before they ate the buffalo, they would thank, give thanks for the buffalo and thanks to the buffalo. They would thank the buffalo as like an, an entity, thank them for sac, you know, for their uh, for giving them food. So they didn't, you know, they had an appreciation for nature and just reality itself, and they didn't need stupid stories. Uh, necessarily maybe they did have some stupid stories you know but they didn't they didn't like get all hyper about the stupid stories and whether you believe them or not they just appreciated reality i mean it sounds like you just contradicted yourself did they believe the stupid stories or not well i am not a student a scholar of egyptian or not Egypt either or, or egyptian but uh indian shit i know basically what anybody else would know except i'm from south dakota so i had experience with what happened to them and what they became they became but an Egyptian god spoke to you, not an Indian god. Goddess, Egyptian goddess. But she did not necessarily need, what I'm saying is they knew about her in Egypt, but she's not an Egyptian goddess per se because she spoke to me in Idaho in English. Was she hot? So she's not she had a nice voice, but it wasn't human voice. It was very Did she have English. a nice body though? I couldn't see her. Then how do you know it was an Egyptian goddess? Because she said her name and I read her name. And because she was doing all kinds of miracles and because nobody else could speak to me through my soul like that and then a goddess or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can call her whatever you want. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. You won't burn in hell forever. I promise. I, I don't think I'm going to burn in hell forever. I feel like you're going to burn in hell forever. Oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> that's that's what I call Christ insanity. You what does that mean? It means you're insane to think that. Why? Because it's a fucking stupid thought. No, it's not. Because if, if the God that you think created the uh, heavens and earth could only have one sun, you can create every single fucking human being, the, the planets, the stars, the sky, every fucking thing can only have one sun, has to be born of a virgin, and has to die on a cross. So some people, some special idiots, but stupid enough to believe it, can go to heaven and everybody else burns in hell forever. And the path is narrow, few will find it. So most people, according to your idiot Christ insanity, are gonna burn in hell with the devil forever. And that makes you happy because you're fucking insane. How's that? I mean, I'm not the one who's having anonymous Egyptian goddesses. I would up. much I mean, rather be pretty fucking I would insane, much rather dude. be the one to be a hero of a story than one to believe a stupid fucking story and think they're and be proud of believing a stupid fucking story. I'd rather so, be the hero of a story. So what what story are you the hero of? Uh, it's called Gloopy's Big Adventure. Explain. Well, my pen name was Gloopy Boy when I first started my mission. And Gloopy means stupid in Russian, so I was stupid boy. And they found that out. I thought it meant clever, because Umni means clever and Gloopy means stupid. And I was a Russian linguist in the Army. And when I got out of the Army, I, I named myself, when my mission started, I named myself Gloopy Boy, because I liked the word Gloopy. I just freaking liked it. And I thought it, somehow my mind got twisted around and it meant clever, but it meant stupid. So the, my nemesis on the first forum I did, Newsmax.com, had a friend who spoke Russian, and they they told him his gloopy means stupid. So the guy got freaking his rocks off, freaking digging me. Ah, gloopy boy, gloopy means stupid in Russian, not clever. You're a fucking stupid boy, stupid boy, stupid boy, stupid boy, stupid boy. So gloopy. Uh, was and I got chicks with that too, you know. I just walk into some place and says, Yeah, my name is Gloopy Boy. You're Gloopy Boy. Everybody liked that name. Everybody had fun with it. They called me Gloop. Gloop, Sir Gloopimus Maximus, Gloopy's Big Adventure. Uh Gloopy Boy had uh newsmax.com forum completely freaking saturated with I mean, and that's that's another part of the story is that I wanted to I had uh, the ten tenets of Gloopy. Gloopyism. I was making a gloopyism, right? That was going to be like kind of like a new religion, but it was more of a philosophy. And I had the first three written, and then my life went to hell. 
and I never wrote number four because I hadn't. I, I knew at the time. I'm like, I want to make something new, but I ain't got nothing. I you know not. what? You've moved me over. I think you should write number four though. No, I don't. There's no. You cannot re-engineer the human being through cognitive uh, functioning. You are built to be what you're meant to be without you figuring any fucking thing out. Every tool that you need to be what you're supposed to be is already there. That's why children are beautiful, innocence. You know, they run around happy. They glow. They tell you the truth. They say what they think. They act how they feel because they aren't fucked up in the head yet. And then are you are you can i ask you a question i want to get on your level what drugs have you done tonight coffee that's it yeah i haven't i haven't smoked weed for and i've i smoked a little bit with the guy who tortured me because he smoked what? a lot who tortured so, you the uh real estate developer that uh, uh okay. i was working with yeah fuck was, real estate agents no, he a, He wasn't an agent. I was the agent. I I was a fucking disgusting real estate agent. Oh, you were a disgusting. But I didn't sell houses like other ones. I made developments. I picked. I found sweet deals that people could flip and shit like that. But you just said you were a disgusting real estate agent. Oh, it's disgusting. Uh, it's a disgusting profession. They wait, make wait. There's all kinds of lawsuits right now against real estate, and they're getting. They're hopefully going to be uh, put out of business because it's fortunately. They make Remember? way too much fucking money. Now that doesn't mean that they're not worth money, but they can be. You can be filthy, stinking rich just by selling real estate. There's nothing that's worth that much money for somebody that has no talent other than, you know, basically it's selling you real estate, which they don't even have to sell. You walk into a house, you don't buy because the agent says that. You know, you, the only reason a real estate agent makes money is because people think they're cool, and if they call that real estate agent, they're going to be cool to hang out with the cool real estate agent type thing there's no so uh my dad was a real estate agent and i didn't want to go into real estate agent but as soon as i did i became instantly massively successful and i was doing i was doing the best deals in town immediately you know but i got caught in the house with a chick and then all this shit started happening fired 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 and then, you know then i but i did uh the shit i did in town is still landmark and the stuff i would have done would even be greater landmarks maybe someday in the Future, I'll be able to do a real development with my signature. Gloppy sent three dollars. Yeah, man, has made me you, very, very I hope You have success in that. I mean, that seems all kind of Jewish to me. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but trust me, there's nothing, there's nothing or anyone on earth more threatening to Jewry, Jewish control, all that stuff than look your heart in the mirror. It disproves their whole fucking shit about being God's chosen people. Have it's you like, looked your heart in the mirror? That's how I got the freaking thing. Is I it was tortured and I looked at my heart. That's how you got that T-shirt in the background. Yeah, that's uh, look your heart in the mirror uh, T-shirts. They're pretty cool T-shirts. Thank you. Where can we buy them? I don't really have them up for sale. I got a bunch of them. Well, Nobody buys. Why don't you? Can't buy them. Sell yeah. them then. <laughs> like what? Yeah, well, he was gonna buy a shirt. Well, when I put them up in my stand, it's like maybe I'll sell three T-shirts. I'll drag all oh, these okay. T-shirts down, and they just the people don't buy them, you know. And and really, it hurts uh, for people to see that all-seeing eye thing or whatever, you know. They're like, ooh, because they they're all uh, psyoped by Christian Christ insanity, and they think it's evil, you know. Don't but say that. That's that. the, that's blasphemous. No. It, Christianity is evil as fuck. No, you're evil that, as fuck. So that 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 all seeing eye is not evil. That is the eye of providence. Yeah, and no, that's founding, that's idolatry, and you're gonna go to hell for it. <laughs> Thanks. You're gonna burn. Yeah, good. So is most of the humanity. I'm sure that makes you happy, but you're good. You're all good because you believe the stupid fucking story. It's not a stupid fucking story. It's the real story, bitch. Yeah, God knocked up a virgin to save you from the devil. I'm sure you love Jesus so much. Yeah, that's goddamn right he did. Jesus, you love Jesus so much you want to be with Just him. Just like you bit. saw a fucking anonymous Egyptian goddess. No, I didn't see her. They were to. fucking jerking off to. No, she spoke to me while I was laying in misery and tortured hell. Yeah, yeah, I bet. After I declared a mission to find something new. After fucking me. a bottle of whiskey deep, you saw a fucking hot Egyptian goddess that you were fucking spanking your bank to. You know what? There's like... 800 people that have tried 
to tell me shit like this and they all just they're all just stupid just like you no i'm smart i'm you're smarter freaking, than you you're freaking, you're freaking brainwashed by insanity no but i'm you, not yeah you are no nope, prove it you believe god knock, knocked up a virgin to save you from the devil he didn't knock up a virgin it's called the fucking virgin birth he knocked her first up. off you don't even understand the he knocked the her up sense of the scripture and the 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 freaking creator of the universe can only have one son because that's the rules and, and god made the rules and he ordered israel to freaking commit genocide and kill every man woman and child and he loved the smell of burning flesh and uh sacrificed animals and fucking you know if you don't bear fruit you're gonna burn in hell forever well it's more believable than you, you saw some you. weird egyptian goddess in your i didn't see her dream i didn't see her and there's miracles that are 100 percent woven into uh day-to-day -day life they don't require you to believe a fucking thing they're absolutely on record they're absolutely documented they have absolutely tons of witnesses and i'm sitting right here and you don't have to believe i was born of a virgin you don't have to even have to believe i'm anything other are you than saying me. you're born of a virgin no you don't have there's nothing about me that's special other than i declare and you saw and my, an egyptian god i sacrificed myself and my sacrifice was accepted and right. you're, that's the lingo of uh, your religion, which is, you know, and that, it that's sounds like the thing. lingo of what you're saying. No, it's not the it, lingo of my religion. My religion doesn't have you seeing a fucking Egyptian goddess in yeah, this bedroom. So tell me what the sacrifice is if you know your God, that you rule over the entire universe, and you suffer for what six, eight hours on a cross, and you know you're going to go straight to heaven. It's called you yeah. sacrifice the sun for the sins of all man, and it's a very yeah. powerful. That is not powerful. It's stupid. Why? Because that does nothing. Well, you did God absolute, create man or not? You, you have. Who created man? Who created man? Then you're an arrogant fuck. You're not answering my question. Who created man? Well, I don't have to know. But so yeah, so it's just it's just completely random for you. The Egyptian the Egyptian story has a creator named Atum, and Atum made his first. Atum? Did a tomb sacrifice his only born son for the sins of man? No, that's an idiot story. Do you believe in sins at all? Do you believe that humans are just perfectly good? Or do well, you believe laws, that they have failures? The laws of Mott have very cleared out, clearly laid out a lot more than the fucking Bible ever did about what's right and wrong. The laws of Mott? Do you think Solomon and David had harems and God didn't give a shit and that was cool? But now that Jesus is dead, you can't have harems? Did they sacrifice their only born son? They the, the sins of their perfect creation. The Did they do that? that? Only, yes or no? Who made the rule that he can only have? I think the story is completely fucking ridiculous. To even suggest that I would even consider it as being anything close to rational. I mean, you're just you're a fucking flake. Your story I think you're is ridiculous. Flake. That's fine. I don't care. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. There's ten thousand of you. They've talked to me every fucking day on the internet for fucking 20 years. There's They're not 10,000 of us. There's maybe like 20. 2 billion, 2 billion. There's maybe like 20. Stupid. You're all There's the same. Maybe like 20. Let's You're be all real. Exactly the same stupid fucking psychopaths. They want to see everybody burn in hell forever, except themselves. No, 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 no. They believe you're being, you're see, see, you're speaking out of hate now. Let's believing a stupid that. story does not make you anything other than stupid. And let's that's not, not, let's not speak out of hate. Okay, this is getting stupid, uh, Eve. <laughs> All right, what, what do this you guy, have to wrap This guy is not worth fucking 10 cents. Well, I like Galactic, but I think you guys have some disagreements here. Well, um, just, he that's all right. Hey, Ralph. Hey, God bless, buddy. Thank I'm going to take off. God bless you as God, well, man. Take care, buddy. Thank you, man. It's good to hear from you. He might be fine otherwise, but on this topic, he's a fucking idiot. But that's the true of 99% of Earth, so he's nothing special. Hey, do you he's have not. any? That's okay. You guys disagree. Um, Adol, are you still here? Yeah, I'm still here, buddy. What's going on? You got a final question for this guy? He's a nice yeah, guy. Uh, I, I have some disagreements too, but uh, you know, I'm the interviewer, so I got to uh, <laughs> keep my composure. Uh, but no, he's, it's been a wild ride, I have to say that. Uh, go ahead, Adol Wolf. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, again, thanks for uh, letting me pop on, Ralph. Sure. Uh, this, this is, uh, I love this kind of stuff, by the way. Uh, I grew up listening to Coast to Coast and, uh, you know, uh, Ground Zero and all that stuff. So I, I love talking about uh, the strange and paranormal or, you know, religious experiences that people would consider unorthodox. So this has been great. 
Uh, I guess I, I got a final, my final question is like, what would the steps uh, somebody would have to take to become enlightened? Uh, and, and what would that mean for them? Uh, do they, do they ascend to like a heavenly space? Do they become energy? Like, what are we talking here? When you're, uh, the best way I've heard it explained is there's a book called the inner journey home. And it talks about, uh, when you're a child and the first things that start happening to you, uh, scare you or make you feel uncomfortable or insecure, you form like, uh, like a tree has roots, your mind forms you, you basically form this structure that's psychic and you hold that structure for the rest of your life. And, and it says in that, in that book, The Inner Journey Home, that the structure can't change unless you become spiritual, basically, which is to, first of all, see the structure. You have to go into like, they call it meditation, but it, meditation to me implies the wrong things. What you're doing in meditation is just lowering your, lowering your awareness into the actual guts of your life, into the guts of your body, and seeing what's going on inside your guts, right, and inside your soul, with with your awareness, and you see that your uh, you have tension in, you know, various things cause you tension, and you you block the sensations, right. So once you see that, then you just stay down there until you it it like become you become aware of the tensions, what causes them, and everything, and then uh, you relax when you feel that tension coming and you know this is very simplified but you do that over and over and over and over uh through it, it takes years you know to uh have those structures be dissolved so that what you're experiencing is what they call the now so when you're in the structures you don't have an, an awareness of the unity of reality where you're the universe is one thing right it's all one thing is but basically that's what the Egyptians believe too, is that reality is God. And that's another thing I, I read about. The Egyptians believe that reality, God never became anything other than himself in creation. He just, he just became himself in, in, and even to use the he thing is just, you know, but uh, so that's why I think when people say, well, how can evil exist? And it's just, when somebody good dies or whatever, you know, everybody's heartbroken and it's terrible. There's no justice and everything, but what's really dying or what's really going away is the creator himself or, you know, herself, you know, whatever the divine being hasn't been affected. No. We, uh, we don't have as a separate entity, we aren't something, uh, to isolate as being affected. Like, Joe died, you know, it's just like, no, the, another expression of the divine being passed into the whatever cycle that it all goes through, you know, which I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, I see but, what you're saying. So you're saying that uh, basically we live inside of the goddess. Yeah, or the divinity, uh, the creator, which the create the goddess that spoke to me is not the creator, at least according to Egyptian stories. Now, I don't necessarily know for fact at all that these stories are true. But the goddess that spoke to me was the first created female. And then her brother was the first created male. But uh, to be enlightened has nothing to do with cognitive. You don't learn shit. You don't get red pilled or blue pilled or white pilled or any of that shit. It's becoming, uh, it's going to the bottom of your soul and letting yourself. But you can, when, you, when you try to learn shit and cognitively affect yourself, you're basically re-engineering what God created with your own. The best you can do is to have absolutely no, the spiritual traditions, you become nothing but the breath. You become nothing. And then, and that's even in the Bible, you know, that's because Paul studied, uh, Paul studied that stuff before he became, he was in, you know, at least according to history, I've read that he, he had coming nothing and all that stuff was not native to Jewish stuff. He had read that other way elsewhere but you, well, you become that's, nothing. An all, that's an all like buddhist religions as well like like focusing on meditation and becoming you know becoming your true self within yourself that's that's yeah. in a lot of like meditation based religions they, they so, know yeah. they know the truth about that that it does open you to experience that you could never have and that when i uh when i first experienced that i i uh, was at a radio head concert <laughs> and I was walking around like this, right? Joe I was, said I was five tortured, but you know, zero, I zero on my Rumble. girlfriend. It was right by her house Wait. in Washington, right? So I'm going to a Radiohead concert, and I invite her, and she's like, "Fuck, I don't want to go." <laughs> so I go into Radiohead by myself, 
and uh, I had this deep spiritual experience. I was walking around like this. There was like a big ring inside the outdoor stadium, and I, was, you know, I was just woo 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 woo, and I was experiencing reality because I let down all my guard, right? I somehow, and it only didn't last very long. And it, I do think that you do get answered when you seek, seek, and it will be, you know, for seekers there's a special they start you start getting clues right. called like synchronicity and stuff right. so anyway uh i well, experienced man hey, you know i i just wanted to say before i get out of here uh i because i got a dip but um you know thank thanks for coming on the show uh and, and taking and taking the blunts of uh everybody's words and you know keeping in stride we appreciate interesting people coming on the show as a True. viewer of the show for many years i have to say you know thanks for coming on it's uh it's hard to put yourself out there and you know although i i highly disagree with a lot of the things that you said i, I don't find you to be like a bad guy so uh, i appreciate you sure okay thank you ada wolf i appreciate you brother have a good weekend yeah god bless you ralph have a good one buddy god bless you as well ada wolf here uh long time viewer a friend of mine um new age messiah jay man i appreciate you coming on tonight it was like i said it was a wild ride i knew it was gonna be i didn't really know how wild it was gonna be when you broke out the golf cart story i <laughs> dude, dude listen, I, for a loop. I got yeah. through 70 percent of the wild shoot it gets even wild or, you know not wilder but you know there's even more but uh just for uh oh there's way more there anybody's still watching I, if if you uh i did i have a separate account on twitter uh L Y H I T M. So it's at and the initials of look your heart in the mirror. L Y H I T M. I just posted a bunch of media and there's some videos and YouTube and stuff like that. There's the one where I did immediately after the uh, kid cannabis story. I did a video. You can tell that I'm crippled. If you think, oh, you weren't crippled or whatever, you can tell by just watching me that I'm like, I have like a massive wound in my guts and I'm talking. I'm trying to convince them to put me as a, uh, whatever uh apprentice journalist on for the rolling stone right i'm trying to talk him into that and you can tell that i'm crippled and but and and there's that little video it's an old video it's freaking shitty quality but it's freaking history it's 20 years it's 2006 i think i made that video april 2006 there's a little date on it date stamp thing on it um and that should demonstrate that i was freaking tortured and crippled that I had that Rolling Stone story that it's all real. Mm. Um, and then there's other media that you can see. There's my stand at uh, Small Camp Fair and uh, just pictures of a lot of my stuff and everything. And, uh, you know, if you, if you could talk to Ralph and say, yeah, we want more. And then wanna, I'll tell you what, at least it, when I get enlightened, I think it'll happen any day, like the freaking trauma will go away. Then I'll, I'll send you a, what do you call it? A DM or something? And just say, Ralph, I'm enlightened. Or maybe by then it'll be in world news. You know, probably this is kind of like a nuclear thing. When it does go off, it's going to go off. It's freaking. Yeah, radical. brother, I'd love to have you back. We we might uh, do another one. Uh, maybe go into some of the stuff. Think or go back and watch this, or think of what you didn't talk about. Maybe uh, that you wanted to, or some of the wilder stories from it. Maybe we could do a part two at some point. Um, and yeah, just be safe, man, and enjoy the weekend. And I had a fun time. It was a wild ride. See, I could cut my finger. I got a new job. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, be careful out there. Don't, don't uh, get hurt. But yeah, man, I had fun. And uh, stay safe out there. And and uh, enjoy your time. Beautiful place where you live. So uh, enjoy your time up there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Rob. All right, brother. Later. Page Messiah live on the kill stream here this evening. Also, my cat is stalking around here. Hey, smoke. They can't hear you. What? Meow? Meow? Could y'all hear that? Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!